Hey everyone, Scott from RBGFan.com, and I'm back once again with another preview for our readers out there. This time, it's the soon-to-be-released Dragon's Dogma 2 by Capcom. So thanks to the people at Capcom, I had the privilege to check out the preview build of the upcoming game. I got to play a few hours of the game and will do my best to sum up the demo the best I can. Like many, I was very surprised when Dragon's Dogma 2 got announced because it was a game I never expected to get a sequel. But after playing this demo, I'm glad it is because Dragon's Dogma 2 has the foundation to be one of the best open world RPGs released thus far. One of the best things about video games in this day and age is most certainly the ability for developers to create these vast open world games that weren't feasible back in the day. Even just going back 10 years ago when the original Dragon's Dogma was released, open world games were still in the infant stages and still going through a lot of growing pains. Many people still find open world games to be boring and find traversal to be a slog. Why make these vast, boring, and empty stretches of land when your destination is the spot where the action happens? It's a very valid point that developers still struggle to get right. The answer for most games seems to make the ability to traverse these areas quicker, either by increasing movement speed or fast travel. If you ask me, the only games that appear to do this ideally are still the two recent Legend of Zelda titles. They perfected the art of making the travel between destinations the fun part, and not the destinations themselves. So when Dragon's Dogma director Hideki Itsuno recently said in an interview with IGN that Dragon's Dogma 2 would have limited fast travel because it's boring and leads to a boring game because the developers didn't take the time to make travel fun, I knew what I had to experience with my time with Dragon's Dogma 2. I had to see firsthand if Dragon's Dogma 2's open world could bring out that adventurous and curious side of me. So to break down my time with the game, we played two distinct parts of the demo, with two different vocations. Vocations are just Dragon Dogma 2's version of the class system, which the player may change in the game at their whim to best match either their playstyle or maybe to synergize better with their AI companions, which are once again called pawns. The first vocation I got to try was the new Mystic Spearhand, a melee-oriented class that combines magic with melee attacks to add a flavor to the kit. The Mystic Spearhand's four abilities that we got to use were its Gap Closer that would teleport you to the target and then stab it, a Levitate ability that allowed you to pick up anything from rocks to the actual enemy itself and fling them somewhere else, a Magic Barrier that allowed you to block enemy attacks, and my favorite move of the four, a Downward Thrust Attack from the Sky that impales enemies onto your weapon. They also had a ranged Magic Bolt option that could be charged up to do more damage. The Mystic Spearhand is an enjoyable class that fits my style of play to a T. I will definitely be using this one when the game gets released. For this part of the demo, we were placed in a small town at a border checkpoint and tasked with trying to get through said checkpoint with a fake passport. Instead, with my mind made up to check out the open world nature of Dragon's Dogma 2, I decided not to follow the main quest for the section and rather forge my own path. I talked to the townsfolk, picked up some side quests, and left town to start my adventure. The quests, by the way, were given to me organically by running into the person who needed help and not by finding a person with a quest marker above their head, as those do not exist as far as I can tell in Dragon's Dogma 2. I left town, and I was on my way to save a lost boy who was playing in the flowers near the village. Not too far away from town, passing through a cave, I was ambushed by various enemies and got to experience battle for the first time. This battle ought to be an enemy. Battles in Dragon's Dogma 2 are not the fast-paced, combo-heavy combat you may find in Final Fantasy XVI, but are more of a middle ground between that and a Souls game, without being anywhere near as punishing as a Souls game. Combat basically feels visceral, but not overwhelming. It's a great middle ground. You have four abilities for your vocation tied to the skills button on the L1, along with a normal attack on the square and a class-specific normal attack on the triangle. You have plenty of options to heal and protect yourself, along with the three pawns you can bring into battle. They will heal, buff, and attack the enemy without fail. I am not the biggest fan of AI party members, but the pawns do well in combat and fend for themselves rather well. At no point did I feel like I had to babysit them. And I grew attached to them so much so that when I saw one of them about to get carried off by a giant bird, I did my best to stop fighting and knock that bird out of the sky before my pawn was carried off to their death. 
Also, one of the best combat options from the original game is still present, which is the ability to grab enemies and do various things to them. You can grab larger enemies in any part of their body and ride them while stabbing them as long as your stamina holds out. You can also push or pull enemies that are losing their balance to tip them over. Your pawns will even help you out in this endeavor for the larger enemies. It's a rather fun combat system that can get pretty funny at times when you're holding on to a floating enemy griffin for dear life while your pawns are in its talons getting squeezed to death. I often laughed at the crazy things that happened in some of my battles and enjoyed myself a lot. Continuing my journey, I noticed they were not exaggerating about having so much to see and do. This area wasn't just some big field they let me roam around in. Instead, it was a very carefully crafted mountainous area with multiple rivers and bridges connecting different parts together. You could follow the road or veer down the cliff and see what awaits you. For instance, I found a giant griffin boss battle awaiting for me at the supposed destination, which was supposed to have wolves instead. I got so sidetracked just exploring that I was way past my target location before I knew it. I already fought a griffin, a giant beast I pushed into the river, and a dragon that appeared out of nowhere and almost leveled me. I don't think I felt that much wanderlust since Breath of the Wild. And that's how it's best described as. Breath of the Wild without the ability to climb vertically wherever you wish. The game also has intuitive quest design. Because once I was told I couldn't go any further for demo reasons, I turned back and tried to get back on target. But it was nighttime. And being at my destination at night allowed me to finish the quest since the night the flowers glowed. The boy the wolves took away dropped the flowers leading to the wolves' den. So I was rewarded for my curiosity to explore because I wouldn't have figured it out otherwise during the daytime. I absolutely love games that give players the feeling of, oh, that's how you do that, instead of just explaining it or showing it. It feels like Dragon's Dogma 2 will have those moments in spades. The next part of the demo had the other vocation we were allowed to check out, the Magic Archer, a returning vocation from the original game. Much like the Mystic Spearhand, Magic Archer is a combination class that uses magic, but this time in conjunction with a bow. They may not do a lot of damage, but they offer support abilities and allow you to deal with threats from afar and those in the sky. Their four abilities were homing ice arrows that charged up and hit more times the longer you held the reticule on the target, a controllable fire arrow that once released can be manually guided to the target, I think those are remote control missiles from Perfect Dark, a ricochet arrow that when charged up unleashed a barrage of bouncing arrows everywhere, and a support heal arrow that allows you to heal your pawns from afar, or, if you charge it up, resurrect them if they're in a down state. I won't lie, I'm not a big fan of ranged characters, and Magic Archer was a bit tricky to get used to at the start due to the reticule targeting required from the class, but after a few minutes and a few battles, I found the controls pretty intuitive and fun. Even just playing these two, I can see there being a vocation for just about anyone to enjoy in the full game. Once again, I set off on my own and ignored the main quest in front of me, in this much bigger city that we were in. High up on the plateau, I worked my way down, ledge after ledge, going in and out of caves and valleys, just finding whatever I could. And that's when things got real. I decided to attack a giant orc boss, which I quickly learned was a mistake because right around the corner was a more gigantic and more armored orc. And I ended up in a double boss fight against two towering giants. What made it even crazier was that there was an ox cart on the nearby road that you usually take to get back to town a bit quicker. That was suddenly part of the fight. They got destroyed fast, and I found myself laughing as my battle with these orcs over an already broken caravan was getting crazy. It was chaotic, but fun, which is definitely what you want to see from a game like this. But all good things come to an end, and after the battle with the orcs, my time with the demo was up. Some other things to note were that the game ran pretty smoothly on the PS5, even with two huge bosses on the screen at the same time, all the while boasting some impressive draw distances for everything in the world. I also heavily enjoyed the banter the pawns offer while exploring, and their customization from the first game is still there, along with the customization of a player character as well. There's a lot, and I do mean a lot to do and see in Dragon's Dogma 2, 
And I can't wait to see more when it comes out later this month on March 22nd. I once again want to thank the people at Capcom for inviting us out, and I hope you all enjoyed this preview coverage. If you want to read a written version of this video, you can find it in the links below at our website, rbgfan.com. And if you like this, definitely give this video a like and a sub and a comment if you want to. I love bringing these videos to you all, and if you want to see more, just let me know. Hopefully, there'll be more in the future. Uh, links to all the socials down below as well, so feel free to join us in Discord and Twitch, where we're enjoying a fantastic year of RPGs together, and I hope it continues. And yeah, possibly playing Dragon's Dogma 2 as well. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you soon. Peace out.